Hello hackers, welcome to Poem College. This is the start of a new module, specifically a module on exploitation scenarios. Um, really what I mean by that is putting together the building blocks that you have learned so far in the previous five modules into kind of end-to-end -end attacks against more complex targets than you've seen thus far, or at least more complex combinations of vulnerabilities than you've seen thus far. How to do that? Well, let's start by remembering what we learned in the very uh, beginning of the course in the introduction module um, about Phineas Fisher. So Phineas Fisher was a hacker um, represented by this Muppet um, who uh, Phineas Fisher appeared as on an interview with, I think, a Vice magazine. Um, uh, after their very famous hack against the hacking team. And Phineas Fisher compromised hacking team in this uh, meticulous step-by-step -step, uh, method. First, they got, uh, they, they performed external reconnaissance to understand what they're up against. They gained a foothold into the network using kind of an entry vulnerability on an embedded device. Um, they uh, performed internal reconnaissance on the network and they, step-by-step step gained influence on the network, continually performing additional reconnaissance every step of the way until achieving total compromise and uh, gloating about it. Um, if you don't remember this story, um, take a look at the uh, intro module um, I relayed there. A very interesting example of an end-to-end -end, um, real vulnerability compromise. So how can we take these lessons and apply it to um, this course. Well, we want to think like Phineas Fisher, and by this I don't mean go into a life of cybercrime. Um, I discussed the ethics of uh, cybersecurity in the intro module. Um, go back and review those. But um, Phineas Fisher and their example really introduces a... Um, uh, very interesting framework with which to approach these uh, more complex exploitation scenarios. Um, so let's uh, look through the steps that Phineas uh, Fisher took to compromise hacking team and see how it, those steps might apply to the types of problems that you will be facing in this module. Um, the uh, steps are roughly the same. First, you are given a challenge problem. Perform external reconnaissance. Open it up in a reverse engineering tool, in Binary Ninja, Ghidra, what have you. Um, understand how it works. Run it. Interact with it. Um, consider what functionality might be vulnerable. And of course, the functionality that's going to be vulnerable is going to be the functionality that you can interact with directly, that your user input touches that processes your user input and so forth. Um, then once you have an idea of potential vulnerable functionality, you want to exploit it, find the smallest security hole. Maybe there is an off by one um, error in a uh, input processing routine. Maybe there's a stack buffer overflow. Um, maybe there is a, um, a signedness error in a length check. Find that smallest uh, security hole and exploit it. Overflow the buffer, for example. And then do the internal reconnaissance. Stop and look at what did my um, single step achieve, right? I overflowed the buffer. What have I achieved additional control over? What else can I do? as a next step, what other vulnerabilities have I now introduced into the program um, that might allow me to um, take, uh, continue to gain additional influence over the program state. Um, and then of course, step four is gaining that influence. Step four is continuing to use the additional weaknesses that you have now introduced into the program by taking advantage of one vulnerability to continually chain and build on the capabilities that you as an attacker have within the program. 
Um, of course, this is fairly vague. Uh, it very much depends on the programs you're trying to exploit. Um, and this module will really be about um, learning through practice. Um, but the general steps is, are, are these, right? Um, of course, step five, after going um, through the internal reconnaissance, understanding what control you have over the program, understanding what potential next steps you can take, um, eventually the program will be completely um, compromised. The computer system that you're attacking will be completely broken. And then you can move on to step six, read out the flag and submit it. Um, this is very much an art, right? You are creating an exploit, you're creating functionality out of thin air, functionality that did not exist in that program when you started. The programs that you will be seeing in these modules were never designed to read the flag file, were never designed to execute arbitrary code. They were very much meant to do a very small thing, read in your name and say hello, or execute um, code in an esoteric computer architecture for which the opening of files has been disabled these sort of things and you will have to take those programs and you will have to force them to dance to your own music you'll do that by putting together everything you've learned in the course thus far and applying it in tandem to achieve complete control uh the rest of the videos in this module i'll go through a couple of very specific examples of um, these sort of situations. And in the practice problems, there will be significantly more. The practice problems is where the meat of this module will um, really uh, come across. Um, this is a new thing that we're trying with Pwn College. Hopefully it works out great and you solidify the knowledge that you've gained thus far. See you in the rest of the videos.